Good morning, church. How's it going? Let's stand up and sing together.
somebody's name, shake somebody's hand, tell them you love them this morning. I just want to say thank you for being here. Uh, our church staff is so excited that you're here, and we have a gift for you in the foyer. There's a little coffee mug with your name on it. Also, in front of you is a QR code, and you can find all sorts of information about our church right there uh, in the seat pocket in front of you using that QR code. Today, we have a bake sale for Operation Christmas Child right after service. That's right. Uh, it's going to be in the fellowship hall. All you got to do is show up, and uh, you can kind of shop around like uh, you're you are there uh, shopping the best home-baked goods ever created right there in the fellowship hall. And all the money that you might spend will go for a wonderful cause of sending uh, these Operation Christmas Child boxes around the world to children that need them. A few other announcements. Uh, this Wednesday night, we will not be having service because on Friday night, we will have our Good Friday service. So we will not see you Wednesday night, but we'll see you Friday night. Uh, as you see here, our Easter schedule is uh, Friday night at 6 p.m. right here in this room, Good Friday. We are so excited for that. And then Sunday at 7 a.m., you may watch the sunrise over the mountains behind the church. Um, we are going to have an incredible service on the lawn at 7 a.m. It is, a, it is a, a cool experience, but it isn't our Easter celebration service that's right in here. So we would invite you to come to both if you can make it. Uh, they are two completely different services. One on the front lawn with Pastor Gary Henneke uh, is an incredible just walkthrough of what Easter morning must have been like for the disciples. And so we kind of set the tone for the day with that. And then we come in here in this place and celebrate big time. Uh, so make sure you take those cards that are on uh, your chair and invite somebody, bring them with you on Easter Sunday. We would love for you to join us next Sunday. Now, Saturday is, I know our children are getting excited. I've got two that are really excited for this. Pastor Dustin and his team have put together an incredible Easter egg hunt Saturday at 10 a.m. And uh, what we need to do, uh, if you are volunteering for that, he has asked that you would stay after church uh, and you can buy baked goods, but you can also stay for the volunteer meeting. Uh, and that way uh, you can know exactly what we need from you. But go ahead and be inviting your friends. Be praying for who God wants to reach uh, at Concord this Easter, whether it's through the Good Friday service, the sunrise service, the Easter service, the Easter egg hunt. Whatever God's doing in this place, we just hope that you would be in prayer and partner with us to make a big impact in our community. Um, if you would, uh, I would invite the ushers forward this morning. We start every Sunday off with uh, giving back our first fruits to God. Uh, we just had a lesson on tithing with our students this morning, and I'm just pumped at the idea of young people that see the value in giving back to the kingdom what belongs to God. And so church, I would just encourage you to take a, a lesson this morning from the teens that the excitement to give back to God, to use what he has given us, to, to make an impact in our community, to make an impact in the world. When we pass the buckets around, th this is not just an opportunity for us to uh, put money in that supports a bunch of things. All that we are doing is for God. All that we have been given is from God. And so we use this to further his kingdom and to build his kingdom right here on earth. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we pray this morning. We pray that your spirit would be in this place. We pray that the things that you have blessed us with, we, we return those to you. We invest those in your kingdom, God, because we know that you can do incredible things. And so we ask that you would uh, take Concord Community Church this week that you would take Concord Community Church and put us out into the community, that we would, we would go out and we would bring people to know that who Jesus was is a risen Savior, God. Somebody who has conquered death, somebody that will, uh, 
will be there for us and forgive us for our sins so that we can have life eternal. And we want to celebrate that in this community, God. So would you take this offering and bring your love to the rest of us around us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, the treasures of faith are never enough until you came along.
Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, 
Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven.
are continuing in our series this morning. We are looking at some words to live by. Uh, we're exploring passages throughout the scripture over the next couple weeks. And what we're saying is that these passages in scripture can radically change the way that we live life. Amen? Um, before we get there this morning, a couple things. First of all, Pastor John has already told us, uh, and we know without a doubt. You good there, bud? I thank you. Appreciate it. I couldn't do it this morning, so that's great. Um, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And in case you don't know, uh, Easter Sunday is uh, one of the Sundays each year that people are most willing to come to church. Uh, it's no secret, but I need your help next Sunday. Uh, we've asked you for the last couple of weeks, we've put some postcards on your chair. They do nothing unless you follow through with it. Uh, unless you take that card, unless you make that call this week, unless you send that text this week, you talk to your neighbor, you talk to your coworker, and you ask them to come and experience what truly is the greatest day that we can celebrate in our lifetime, and that is Easter. We are nothing without our Heavenly Father. And so next week, the reason we celebrate, it isn't for fancy clothes. It isn't just to see everybody. It is because we are celebrating what makes our feet hit the floor every single morning. So I need you to ask somebody because you never know who might hear for the very first time this life-changing message of the gospel. Number two, everybody loves where they sit on Sunday. But next Sunday... I need you to move up and move in, okay? Everybody say, move up, move in, ready? That's what I need you to do. Make some room, make some space for those that may be coming and being here. And finally, be nice to people. <laughs> There's probably gonna be somebody that you don't know next week and you should be nice to them. You should welcome them. We should have 200 greeters on the greeter team next week, not just the regular ones that are out there. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Now let's start with our message uh, today. We're looking at words to, uh, to live by. Uh, most of you know my story. Uh, my family moved to Nolansville about 15 year, uh, when I was about 15 years old. And uh, we moved here, but I've been here about 30 years now. But before I lived in Nolansville, which is kind of unique, I mean, I still, I get really treated as like uh, one of the old timers around here at the way things are moving. But I'm a Florida boy. I grew up in Florida. Uh, my, my heart uh, still longs for Florida, right? Like I love to visit Florida. I don't really want to live there anymore. Uh, I love living in Tennessee, but there's a saying that you can take the, the boy out of Florida, but you can't take the Florida out of the boy. And that's kind of how I feel. Like I just, uh, somebody else is from Florida this morning and they understand where I'm at. Um, I, I love the sunshine. I love the warm weather. I love the ocean. I love the smell of Florida. I know that sounds weird, but the smell of Florida is a, a, it's a little bit of like uh, salt and humidity uh, kind of mixed together. And, and, and I just love that, that picture. And where I grew up in Florida, um, it was kind of inland, and we were surrounded by orange groves. Uh, and, and everywhere you went, you just saw groves after groves of these orange trees. Do you know how you can tell if a tree is an orange tree? If it has oranges, that is correct, that's right. You can tell what kind of tree it is by the fruit that it produces. That's, that's with, with any tree. And, and what Christ tells us and what the scripture tells us is the same is true about me and you. You can tell what kind of, of tree we are, what kind of person we are by the kind of fruit that we possess, the kind of fruit that we are displaying. Uh, we're going to look in John 15 today about what he's talking about. And here's a little backstory to this passage. Jesus and his disciples have already met in the upper room. They have already eaten the Last Supper together. And Jesus is now trying to prepare them on how to navigate life without him. He has walked through all these stories with them. He has been there for the healings. He has been there to give them guidance and direction the whole time. But he knows that his time is coming, that he will no longer be with them physically. And so he is trying to share with them what it's going to look like. And he gives them these seven I am statements. 
these seven I am statements in the book of John. And actually next week at Easter, just a little, uh, we're going to go back to one of these I am statements that I think is really important. But this I am statement is happening here in John 15, starting in verse 1. He says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you, gives this instruction. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, then you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. A couple things that we're going to pull out from this passage. The first thing is there's just one vine. Just one vine. And this imagery of the vine would be something that the disciples understood really well. It was part of their context. It was part of their culture. It had been taught throughout the Old Testament, uh, this imagery of the vine as, as far as the promise of God's people. In fact, in Psalm it says, Restore us, God Almighty. Make your face shine on us that we may be saved. You transplanted a, van, a vine from Egypt you drove out the nations and you planted it. You cleared the ground for it and it took root and it filled the land. They're saying, God, you've done this before. You, you, we long for this, this vine. We long for you to, to instill life into us. The, uh, they understood that at one point the people of Israel were connected to God. They were his chosen people. But then the nation turned away from God. The nation decided to try to live life their own way. They chased after things that were not God. And, and chasing things that were not God, they began to choose sinful things. And we understand that because of sin, there's a, a penalty of sin. And the penalty of sin is death. But God, through his love and his mercy, sent his own son, the one true vine, so now we have Jesus, and he's saying to them, remember the vine? Remember the vine that you longed for? I'm the vine. Remember the vine that you've been waiting on? Remember this vine, this connection that you wanted back to God? I am the vine. I am the one true vine. But we also see there's one true vine, and then there's two types of branches that are on this vine. One that bears fruit, and one that doesn't one that lives and one that dies. One that gets cut off, but one that thrives in this connection with God. So what is it that makes one branch die and one branch live? Remember, it says, the branch that remains in me is the branch that lives. Some of your versions this morning may say the, that uh, abides in me. The Greek word that is used in this passage is actually meno. And meno means to be held, to be kept continually. It means to, to linger, to hang around, to, to want to be in that presence, to linger in a place and, and not want to return. I told you that I'm a, a Florida boy at heart. And this last month, I've been able to, uh, to take a couple quick trips back to Florida. One was uh, for a conference that Pastor Dustin and Pastor John and myself got to attend, and it was fantastic. Uh, I think 8,000 people gathered together, singing, worshiping, being challenged on what it looks like to, be, to reimagine our call to bring the gospel to a broken world. And it was fantastic. And I loved all of the learning and the spiritual inspiration at the conference, but I didn't want to linger longer than I needed to because I wanted to come home to my family, right? I enjoyed it, but I didn't, I didn't need to linger there any longer because I wanted to come home. I came home for a couple days, and then we had the opportunity to go stay with some friends down in Florida for spring break. 
And I got to sit on the beach, and, and I got to feel the sand and the salt water, and I, I got to get sunburned, which I love. And, and it was fantastic, and we were enjoying it, and I was having all this time with my family, but spring means softball in our house. And for some reason, softball means spring breaks are always cut short. And we had to leave a little earlier from the beach than I wanted to, but I got to tell you, I could have enjoyed a little longer time lingering at the beach. I kind of long to linger with my family, to linger with a time away, to linger in an opportunity to, to kind of put things aside and just focus on our family for just a few minutes. That's what this idea of remain is trying to get across to us. It's a strong desire to be with Christ. It's a strong desire to hang out, to enjoy his presence. I love every opportunity that I get to spend with Stephanie. I love her. I mean, I, like, I really like her. I married her because I like her, okay? I like to be with her. I like to spend time with her. Uh, and, and, and honestly, I mean, she is beautiful. She is smart. She is kind. This week, my wife has been a rock star. I have laid flat on my back since last Friday till this Friday because I haven't been able to stand for more than 10 minutes at a time. And all week long, my wife has done everything she can possibly do to get me ready to be with you today. She's a rock star. I love spending time with my wife. I love whether it is just sitting on the couch after a long week and, and just hanging out, just watching TV, just that, that's fine. I also love when we go clubbing on Friday nights. <laughs> Y'all know what that means, right? Going to Sam's Club on Friday night because after 40, that's what clubbing on Friday night means. Um, but I, I, I just enjoy time. I, I enjoy anything. It could be menial tasks, but, but I desire to spend time with her. I desire to abide, to remain. It says the one that desires to be together, that's the branch that receives life from the vine. The one that desires to be in God's presence. Listen, this is not something that we just check a box on and say, my attendance is enough. We need to desire to remain, abide, and be in the presence of God. Abiding starts with believing. If you want to abide, then you have to believe. And look, Easter is the greatest time of the year. Easter is what we're doing, right? We have to believe and know that we are sinners in need of a Savior, y'all. We need Him. We are nothing without him. We have to believe that we need God, that we need to, to understand that without God, there is no reason for our feet to hit the floor in the morning. It is not to, to pad our bank account. It is not to get the promotion. It is not to get a diploma. It is not to get a job. It is not to get married. The only thing that matters is abiding in the God that saves us and gives us life. God that rode in on a donkey on Palm Sunday, prepared his disciples, died on Friday. A horrific, horrific, painful death, but then rose on Sunday, overcame death and gave us life. A branch abides and remains because we believe in who God is. We believe in our need for God. It's the branch that trusts the vine to provide and to protect it. So that when elements of the world come against it, when storms come, when droughts come, the branch will be okay because the branch is connected to the vine. Do you feel that? When life gets turned upside down for you, when things are unexpected and they are not going your way, and you're asking yourself and you're crying out and saying, why God, why? Listen, because you are connected to the vine, you will be okay. He will see you through. That's what it should look like for us. When these difficulties come, when these elements come, we'll be okay because we remain connected. We remain believing. We remain trusting in Jesus, who is our vine. Abiding is also an action. 
There is action to abiding. Yes, it is a strong desire to abide. It is a strong desire to be in his presence, to want to be in his presence. But there's action that goes along with abiding. We need to stay connected to God. It means being in prayer and conversation with God, not just letting somebody else pray for you. It's you having that conversation, you going to the Father. It's opening his word on your own, more than the verse of the day on your app, more than letting me read it to you on Sunday morning. Guys, it is you diving into the Holy Scripture where God wants to speak to you. Abiding is an action step. It's being with other believers. It is making Sunday a non-negotiable for your family. There is nothing better than being in the presence of God, especially in the presence of God with God's people. I tell you, man, you miss one Sunday, it's like a slippery slope. I can miss one more. I can miss one more. And before you know it, you've gone so long without experiencing what it means to be connected to the vine. Abiding is action. Abiding is being discipled and discipling others. It is not all about somebody just speaking into your life. If you have accepted Christ as your heavenly Savior, if you have, have connected to the vine, get to work, people. You have a job. The job to share the gospel is not for professional pastors. The job to share the gospel is for every disciple that says to him, I want to remain in you, be connected to you. That's why I'm telling you there's a postcard on your chair. That's why I'm telling you there's somebody at work. There's somebody in your family. There's somebody that needs to hear the life-changing message of God. And you might be the only one that's going to give it to them. Don't miss that opportunity. It's, it's praying with others. What if, you, what if you actually prayed out loud right where you were without shame? What if in the middle of your office or your classroom, you actually, when talking to someone, said, can I pray for you for that? And you stopped and you actually laid hands on the person and prayed for them. That's abiding in Christ. If you're in the parking lot of the school and you're talking about what's going on and you say, can we pray about that together? And you hold hands with one another, no matter who's looking at you, and you pray together, that is abiding in Christ. Y'all, what does it look like to take action in this abiding? It says the branch that abides is the branch that lives, but it also says there's two branches. It says there's one that abides and lives and the other that does not abide and it's cut off. You know, we talk about this series of, of being a, a series that can change the way that we live, right? That scripture should actually be changing us and moving us. As I was preparing and, and studying for this, this is the part that I thought, this, this radically changed the way that I lived life when I was younger, and I think it might need to radically change the way that some of us live life. See, it says that both of these vines, one that is abiding and growing and one that is not, are both connected. It says they both know Jesus. They're both there with Jesus. I didn't just grow up in Florida. I grew up in the church. I was in the church from the very beginning of life. I mean, they brought me in and the baby, I don't think they had baby carriers. I think they just carried me in, but they brought me in and and I was dedicated in the church, and I was baptized in the church, and I went to kids camp, and I went to youth camp, and I went to NYC, and I went to a Christian college. And, and I got to tell you, man, when the doors were open, I was there. And by the looks of everything on the outside, I was a Christian. I was connected to the vine. But just because I was there doesn't mean that I was abiding. Attendance doesn't equal abiding. I'm going to say it again. Attendance does not equal abiding. Both are connected. Could it be possible to be connected to the vine but not be producing fruit? Could it be possible to be in attendance, to be connected, to know Christ, but not be producing fruit? In Matthew, it says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Man, 
Woo! You feel the weight of that? Do you feel the magnitude of that? Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evil doers. You can look the part. You can be in attendance. You can have high standards. You can have great morals. You can have all these opportunities and you can follow all the rules that have been given to you, but it is not about religion. It is about relationship with Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you look the part or not. It's whether or not you remain, abide, or in relationship with him. We have to believe in him. We have to abide in him. We have to remain in him. We can't abide in our job. We can't abide in relationships. We can't abide in finances. We can't abide in a bank account. We can't abide because of retirement is coming our way. We can't abide in people's opinions of us. We can't abide in people's acceptance of who we are. Life won't come from abiding in anything other than abiding in Jesus Christ. Life only comes from abiding in the one true vine. So I gotta ask this morning, what branch are we? What branch are you? I mean, don't ask your neighbor, don't ask your spouse, ask yourself. What branch are you? Are you one that abides, remains, longs, desires, and is producing fruit, and is producing what Christ has, has asked for us to do? It's foolish to think that just because we attend church or we've attended church our whole lives, that that makes us a follower of Jesus. That's like saying that I'm a swimmer. I mean, look at me, I am not a swimmer. Can I swim? Yeah, I grew up in Florida, I can swim. Do I own swim trunks? I do. Uh, have I swam before? I have. Uh, do I have some goggles? The girls probably do in the garage. So I can make those fit, right? But when was the last time that I actually swam laps? Again, like over 40, we usually just get in the pool and just kind of bob at this point. Like we don't want to do too much. It's like saying I'm a swimmer without actually swimming. Guys, sometimes we say we are a Christian without actually being a follower of Christ. Sometimes we say that we know how to and we can and we have and we looked apart, but when was the last time that we actually abided and lived out the message of the gospel? There are some that say that they're a Christian, but they're just not abiding. They don't work to remain. They don't trust in him alone. They don't believe that his way is the best way. If you wanna know what branch you are, you can tell by what fruit you produce. You want to know what kind of tree you are? You can tell by the, the fruit. It's what determines whether you're abiding or not. Galatians 5, 22 through 25. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Man, if your life looks like this, then you are abiding. The fruit is there. It's fruit that comes from the one true vine. We can't just produce these things on our own. When we abide in Christ, it's who we become. We're not putting on an act anymore. We're not putting on a show anymore. We're not just playing the part anymore. It is actually who we are. We can't hide the fact that we are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We can't hide that because it is who we have been transformed into. It's what we look like because our desire is to look like the vine. Our desire is to look more like Jesus every single day. It says there are two branches. Both branches are connected to the vine. Both actually look similar to one another until harvest time. At harvest time, there's a separation. At harvest time, there's one that will live 
There's one that will die. There's one that will have life everlasting. There's one that will be cut off. This is why it should change the way we live life. It has everything to do with not just our future in this lifetime, but our future forever with him. I know the trees in Florida are orange trees because the fruit on their branches is oranges. <laughs> but what fruit are you producing today? Maybe have that conversation in your family today. As you enter into Holy Week, as you enter in the, the greatest week of, of, of life, of what it looks like to be a follower of Christ, maybe it is time to do some final reflection in this final week of Lent as to where you are spiritually. Are you abiding and remaining? Are you looking more like Him? What branch are you today? Are you a branch that leads to life? Or are you a branch that's going to lead to death? We know what branch we are because we know what fruit we're producing. Will you stand with me this morning? Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Can I just tell you, often we hear something in our heart that we know needs action, but we put it off until another day. This morning, will you not put off asking yourself what fruit you're producing? Will you not put it off until next Sunday when we celebrate Easter and celebrate the life that he gives? But in this moment today, will you challenge yourself and ask yourself, Ask those that are close to you. Ask those that you are discipling that are discipling you. Ask your family. Ask the people that are closest to you. What kind of fruit am I producing? What do you see in me? Do you see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness? Do you see that in me? And if that's not what you're producing this morning, there's not a big action step to it. There's not a whole lot of movement towards it. It is simply saying, God, I want to abide in you, remain in you. I desire to linger in your presence all of my days, all of the time. You are what matters most to me. Lord God, be with us this week. Give us strength, give us wisdom. Help this week to be life-changing and impactful for your church all around the world, not just for Concord, God. May people come to a day where they come and understand that there is nothing more important in life than life that you have given us, God. May Easter be an incredible life-changing moment of revival in our church, in churches all around our community, in churches all around our world, because we are bold enough to ask and invite others to enter into a life that abides in you that lives in you, that loves like you love. We pray this, God, in your son, Jesus Christ's name. And all my family said, amen. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to
Jesus call because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living journey. Sing it again one more time. They sound so good. Church, it's been an incredible Sunday. Um, we would love to have you uh, join us in the fellowship hall uh, for the uh, OCC bake sale. Or if you're volunteering, don't forget there's a meeting following service today. Would you read this with me as we close out? To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week. Amen.